Okay, so in this new scene with this color checker and the two balls, what we need to do is we need to make sure, first of all, like just to, to make this look a bit better, what I will do is I will remove the reflection of this ball and the color checker from the Chrome ball. So for this, what I will do is I will select uh, both of these balls and I will go here to Arnold and I will, let me just isolate this here so we can see it better and faster. And what I will do is I will reduce, remove from this specular reflection and if you uh, and uh, cast shadows. Okay, so as you see here, there are other ways to do this. We could do it with, with linking, but this is a quick way of doing it. So if you go to the Arnold tab here in the shape editor, uh, in the attribute editor, what you remove is cast shadow and specular reflection, and we are going to have this like that. So if I go and I change again, let me change the section here to, to here. We will do the same for our for our uh, color checker. So I will remove this. I will remove this one, and now we have our Chrome ball that is only reflecting the rest of the environment and our character. Our character is okay; that is there. But it's good that we don't have this reflection just for not getting distracted with that. So now that we have our color checker and the two balls like there, just as a reference. Again, this is really key to make sure that whatever we are rendering is with the correct lighting and the, the shaders are working correctly through the light. So what we need to do next is we need to test different HDRIs with this, okay? So the moment we have our character here with the floor, the character in the position, and we test this already in a studio light with different lightings. Uh, now we, what we want to do is to check it like in different like in, in different HDRIs. So for this, what I will do is I will put here HDRI the score like rigs to make sure that this is the one that we are using. And we have a few options with this, but one like there is not the only way of doing it. There is a way that you can go here to Windows here and you go to the sorry uh, render edit, render editor a light editor. So here what we have is we have all these, we have all the lights of the scene here that we can control. And here, if we go there, for example, we can select these and let's select this one that are all the lights that are connected. And what we can do is to create here, we could create a new lighting group, okay? And with this lighting group, we can go select all these lights and put them all inside the lighting group. So then with this, we can, instead of like hiding and enhancing, hiding the lights, what we can do is to control it with here. But for the HDRI, let's keep this here for now. For the HDRI that we have here, one, one option that is uh, a bit faster is that if we go here to the Windows, General Editors, and uh, Windows, no, Editor here. We'll see, let me bring the node Editor here. So we'll see is that if we select this light and we press this here, okay, what we'll have is we will have the HDRI light here. Let's select this and let's press here. Okay, so what we are having is we have the shape here. Okay, so this is the shape, this is our shape, and this is our EXR. Okay. So this works pretty similar to the hyper shape. Okay. So what we need to do here is we need to, if we go here, see if we uh, we select the shape here. We can control all the things for one light. And here we can go again. This the node editor works basically like the node editor in the uh, in the hypershade. And what I will want to do here is to add another node that is an AI switch. Okay, and we'll connect the AI switch from here. So see if you see the AI switch, what we have is that we can add different inputs here. So I will come here and I will select this. Oh, sorry, I will select this one. Middle click and go connect this as the first input and go here and connect this switch to the color of the light. Okay, so now what we have is we have this and at the moment see this disappeared because our index is in, in zero. But if we put one here, the light should appear. Sorry, we actually need to select the index zero because it was connecting the index zero. So as you see here, we these disappear, the easier right disappear from here because it, it's just the preview of that. But now what we have is we have this HDRI that is connecting to the switch 
and then it's connected to this. Let's, let's connect it like this. Okay, so it looks a bit cleaner. So what we can do here is, if you remember, we have we have our HDRIs. And if I go, I'm looking for HDRIs in the folder. So if we go here to source images, sorry, here to source images, if I go to HDRIs, what I have, if we, I have all these HDRIs here, right? And let me sort them out by type here to make sure that I'm selecting all EXRs. And here I can go and select, let us let me only select the EXRs that are 4K, just I don't want to get the scene really heavy. And then when I have these, I can go select and bring them all here. Okay, so as you see, now I have all these HDRIs that I will come organize them a bit. Okay, let's do like this, let's select this one. Okay, so then I have all the DRIs here. I have the switch, okay? So if I select this and I have all the DRIs, I can start connecting one by one each of these ones. So let's make sure that I'm in the, this one. So now we will be able, let me stop our, our rendering and Let's connect these ones. So here I have a mix of different type of lightings, like a bit more like direct sun, more overcast, studio light, night light. So we have different options there. So now that we have this, you will see that now I can I can close this. I'll press here play. And what you will see here that if I switch here from index zero to index one, I will start getting index two, we start getting the result from the different directs, right? So this is this is a really nice way to start testing if your materials are working properly in the different directs. So there we go, that's the studio light. This uh, inside a cave. So see how 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 different how different our character behaves to all these lightings. So it's it's really good. So one of the things that I'm realizing here is like okay, this we have it duplicated. One of the things that I'm realizing here is that our character looks a bit too dark. So maybe what we can do here is we can go to our hypershade. Uh, let me clean up this. Okay, and let's make sure that if I go to our character here. Select this, okay, and we go to our color correct node for the base color. Maybe I will increase, let me let me just do a, a selection of this render. And let's go here and select maybe, let's increase slightly the gamma, 1.1. Okay, and you will have it a bit brighter. Uh, let's, let's go back the saturation to one. I think that would be okay because we are increasing a bit. And let's increase the contract to 0 0.3. Okay, okay, that's a bit too crazy. So uh, 1.05 maybe. Okay, so something like this start to look, you start to see it a bit more. I'm, I'm not actually really happy with that. So let me go here to 1.02, something like that. Okay, and let's change the light because this is these are really, these are not, not a light, light nice uh, HDRI, so I will go and select another one. Let me go back to the node editor here. Okay, let's select the switch and let's go back to our one. Okay, uh, there we go, let me select everything. So here, for example, what we have is the lighting is a bit from the back, so here it, it should be dark, so see, you compare like this. But if we go to another one, let me see, that's also a night one. Three. This is an interesting one because we can see we can see like a bit from the side. We can always rotate this HDRI. We can rotate it, so it's that would be that could be okay. And also, what we could do is to to work to add some nodes to rotate each of these ones, right? But for now, I will keep them like this. So something that I'm realizing is at the moment the the roughness it looks a bit too too rough, and it has a coat on top. So what I want to do is I will select this, go to our hypershade again, go to our roughness, and let me isolate a part of this, just to be sure, there we go. 
and I will go to our roughness and I will play a bit with these parameters. Okay, so if I go if I go really to black, as you remember, this will get really, really glossy. We don't want that, so I will go back and I will just add a bit of glossiness there. Okay, so see how we are getting a bit like nicer uh, reflections there. But what I will do is I will go to the code and reduce slightly the, this outer code, so to 0 0.25 maybe. Yeah, I'm a bit more happy with how that's looking, okay? So what I will do now is I will just come here, make sure that everything works correctly, okay? And that's kind of okay. Now now I'm, I'm realizing that again, it's maybe I went a bit too far with the saturation here, so 0 0.95 I think would be good in terms of saturation. And maybe we can go with a bit, increasing slightly a bit of exposure, so to 0 0.25 maybe. So we can do the same, for example, with the pants or the belts and stuff like that. So if I go and select uh, all of these, let me go and select every material here. I will select all of them. Oh, sorry, I need to select and hierarchy here. And I will select now. Okay, there we go. So now I have, we have the four materials that we have. And I will go here to, for example, the next necklace and the axe. And I will make sure I will just move everything a bit to the side. And I will go to our color correct node for this one, for example. And let's make sure that this is connecting to the base color. So this is the color correct that we need. And I will go here and I will increase the exposure. Let's say if I go crazy to free, you will see that everything gets like too, too, too bright. So what I will do is I will put 0 0.5, uh, maybe a little bit less, so 0 0.4. I think that kind of works. Then I will go to, for the clothing, I will do the same. So I go to a color correct node, I will put exposure in 0 0.5. So see how now with the same lighting, we are getting a bit more details. Maybe I went a bit too crazy with the previous one. I think uh, let's put this in 0 0.45 and this one instead of 1.4, let's put 1.3. Okay, 1.25 maybe. So there we go. And uh, see, when now I, when I increase that, it looks that the, the skin looks a bit too dark. So again, I will go back to the skin. Mm, I don't have the skin here. Yeah, let me select the character. Go here. And I will go to this color correct node. And the gum, I was actually not so happy with what I was doing. So I will go to the exposure. And let's put the exposure in. 0 0.5 maybe. Okay, so as you see, when we go here, see now it looks, everything looks slightly lighter. Maybe some things, the whites start to get a bit burned out. So I will go again to this one. Oh, no. This, let me see if it allows me to select. Let me select from here. Okay, there we go. And we go here. And let me go with exposure slightly lower, 0 0.18. Yeah, I think that that's the trick. So there we go. So again, this basically this I, I encourage you to play a bit more with the with these parameters. But basically, what I want to show you is that you can start playing with the parameters and make sure that everything everything looks correct. Again, now if I'm look at this, I'm feeling that. The saturation is a bit too strong. So I will go to 0 0.9, how we had before. Okay. And I think I'm starting to get happy with this. So see, now we are getting this, like the, the, the materials here are getting like a bit closer to this one. So again, you will need to spend a bit more time on this. This is just to show you the workflow. It's, I'm not looking to get it perfect now, but yes, to show you like the different ways of doing it. So now if we go again to our node editor, uh, not, not to the hypershade, to the node editor. We'll go to a switch, to 
switch here and uh, let's test how these lightings work now. So we go to zero. See, now the characters start fitting a bit better in, in our scene. I still feel that maybe the, the skin looks a tiny bit, uh, maybe too contrasty or a bit, a bit like saturated. So again, I will go here, go to the skin. And again, that's, that's why it's cool to have different light rigs because that will, that will give you an idea of how, how everything looks in different areas. So maybe what I, I, what I did was increase the contrast and I went a bit too crazy with that. Yeah, I think the contrast was what, is, what it was making the stuff like not so nice. So I'm kind of happy with this. I think that's, that's good. My, my be but everything needs a little bit more exposure, but I think I will, I will keep it like this for now. I'm, I'm, I'm happy of how this is looking. So if we see here, again, the, there is, this is a really, really low resolution render. So then when we do the render, like in a higher resolution, we will see a bit more details and also maybe we'll need to change some stuff. But for now, I think this is, this is kind of working. So let's do a test now and uh, let's unhide this, the, the hair. So the renders will take a bit longer, but we are going to test now how the renders look. 